ancient protocol has withstood the test of time. You will most certainly use Ethernet at home and at work. Ethernet has a standardized connector, the venerable RJ45. When you need something to just work, often a wire will do that. Now, just because it's IoT doesn't mean it's wireless. It just happens that many things are wireless. But the good things about Ethernet are it's worldwide universal. It's a completely open and free standard. There's no patents, no licensing. Just about every hotel, home and office has an Ethernet port for connecting to the internet already. It's high speed. One gigabit per second Ethernet is available on many routers and on some single board computers. Even the slowest 10 base T Ethernet has better high speed throughput than legacy Wi-Fi like 802.11 B or G. There's no interference from other wireless protocols, no dropouts. A reasonably designed NIC won't suffer from flakiness. It can go up to 100 meters on a single cable. There's no passwords, username, pairing. You just plug it in and go. It's fairly inexpensive to implement. Many chips have a built-in Ethernet Mac, so you only need a Fi and a plug. It can be used as a private internet or connect directly to the worldwide internet. There are some downsides. Well, of course, it requires a permanent cable connection. There's high current draw. Now you're gonna expect 200 to 300 milliamps at all times. There's a large and chunky connector, so if your project has to be small, it's not gonna fit. Watch out for default passwords on things that plug in directly to the internet. Now, the biggest benefit of ethernet is that high speed and plug and play capability. Now, there's no SSIDs, no configuration, no pairing, passwords. There are some security considerations, and we'll get into security later, but there are some benefits of just having a wire since somebody will need physical access to tap or connect to ethernet. And if you have a wire and a Mac assigned IP address, you generally have more control over what and who can access something. Just don't use default passwords on your IoT devices and expose them to the outside internet without being smart about security. As we mentioned, Ethernet is really fast. It can range from 10 megabits per second to one gigabit per second. 10 base T is what you'll find on small microcontrollers. 100 megabits per second is found on some higher power microcontrollers or single board computers. And one gigabit per second is what you'll find on high-end equipment that needs to stream a lot of data. Now compare that with future transports we'll discuss. Some of those are specified in bits per second or kilobits per second, not megabits per second. Ethernet is generally used when you do not need a lot of range, I mean, you're stuck with the length of the cable after all, and you need to move around a lot of bits. Common Ethernet connected IoT devices are cameras, video cameras especially, which have gone to 720 or 1080p, that can strain Wi-Fi connections. VoIP, voice over IP boxes. Game systems. Industrial equipment that's permanently installed. Devices that need air gap security and cannot use wireless connectivity. And high reliability control like industrial control, robotics, or medical. One downside of Ethernet is that it's fairly high current draw. And you'll need to budget 200 to 300 milliamps of constant current available during listen and transmit. However, since you're running a wire anyways for an Ethernet device, usually you can plug in power as well, or you can try power over Ethernet, PoE. PoE is a network standard that puts 48 volts on the unused data wires. This allows the network cables to carry data and power. IP cameras and VoIP phones are where you'll see most of this action. PoE routers are becoming fairly common and they're very affordable. You can add PoE to your design with extra chips and hardware. Hopefully the device you have can do the transport negotiations to turn on PoE. Or you can use a PoE converter, which will split the ethernet and power into two plugs. 